The way to beat these guys is to run the ball. We got to keep doing. This is the Duke Football Show with the head coach of the Blue Devils, Carl Franks. Welcome to another new football show with Coach Carl Franks. Uh, show this week originates from Wallace Wade Stadium, where, Coach, you returned home after being gone about a month, and uh, you'd had a great week of practice. The uh, the kids had a lot of energy, uh, well prepared, uh, you, but things just didn't go quite right in this ball game for you. No, we did have a great week of practice. Our seniors, our, our leaders, our captains really stepped forward this week. We cut back practice uh, a little bit. We didn't go out in full gear this mm -hmm. week. Uh, we wanted to have our guys fresh and, and ready to play. We got a lot of stuff done in practice. We did about the same amount. We just tried to pick up the tempo and, and do things a, a little bit quicker. Our, uh, our captains and seniors and, and the leaders of the team, I, I thought, did a, did a great job of getting our team ready to play this week. We, we gave ourselves a chance this week. Mm -hmm. we, you know, the last three weeks, we haven't given ourselves a chance in, in the fourth quarter. Uh, this week, we did that. Uh, we came out, you know, and, and played great on defense. I, I thought our defense played exceptionally well, especially in the, uh, the first half. Held Lamont Jordan to, to 12 yards rushing, which is a, a pretty big accomplishment because he is an outstanding running back. And uh, we come out of there at, at three, three to nothing, uh, and I think it could have easily <laughs> been about 14 to nothing. Yep. But uh, we seemed to, to find a way to squander some chances that we had. But uh, our team was, was able to hang in there in the first half. All right, uh, you mentioned defense. We're going to be talking to one of those defensive leaders as the show continues. We'll also take a look at the highlights of Duke and Maryland all when we continue. By Verizon, official telecommunications consultant to the NCAA, and by the Durham Hilton. It was youth day and a good crowd on hand for this uh, ball game coach and you talked a little bit ago about the the defense in the first half playing especially well one young man i'd like to talk a little bit about is ryan fowler true freshman and uh, he had uh, he was a leading tackler in this ball game well ryan has, has played very well for us all year uh, he is a true freshman and he's going through a, a big learning experience a lot of things are happening to him for the first time but but he's playing very well he was our leading tackler today and made some great tackles on Lamont Jordan, bringing him down with, with one hand mm -hmm. at, at sometimes. And that's some, not something that you can do to Lamont Jordan uh, very well. Uh, we watched uh, Ryan in high school. Uh, he's from Seminole, uh, Florida, right near St. Pete, coached by Sam Roper. And Sam's a very good friend of mine for a lot of years. <laughs> and it's great to have Ryan on our team and, and playing very well. I think his future is very bright around here if he continues to play the the way that he's done and realize that he's got room to, to get a lot better. You know, sometimes when you have a lot of success as a, a true freshman, you think it, it, it comes pretty easy. Mm -hmm. But I think he realizes that uh, he's got a, a lot of room for improvement, a lot of room to get uh, stronger, to get quicker, and be able to read what the, uh, the offense is doing a little bit better. But uh, he has played very well for us this year. Also, you got some great defensive plays from Sean Johnson, from uh, Troy Austin, and uh, from Tyran Grissom. They got some penetration, got into the backfield, and forced McCall to do some things I don't think he really wanted to do in that first half, as we're going to see now as we go to these first half highlights. Well, we had a, another beautiful day. We've been blessed with some beautiful weather we've played, played in this year. Here's uh, McCall. Throwing down the, the left sideline, a great defensive play by uh, Ronnie Hamilton there. Showing it was incomplete, I guess. Uh, here's Charles Porter making a nice play on Jordan. Uh, we really contained him very, very well in, in the first half. Here we are on offense. We throw a pass out to uh, Jeremy Battier. Uh, they poke it out and, and recover it. But defensively, uh, we did a great job. Here's uh, Jordan running up the middle. Great tackle by Fred Harris, getting him down. Uh, the defense really played outstanding. Here's uh, Ryan Fowler uh, coming up, making a nice play with one hand pulling Jordan down. That, that doesn't happen very often. No, because he's so strong. And here's McCall running out, and you're going to get a chance to see Ryan Fowler again putting pressure on him, and uh, he slips down, and uh, we're able to get the loss of yardage. And you're going to get a chance to see Chris Douglas run the ball a few times here. There he is off the right side here. We pitch it to him to the right. Circles back to the left, picks up a few good blocks, great stiff arm, and gets a, a nice game for us. 
Here's D on a, a called run play for the first down. He gains about seven yards. And we're going to come back and give it to Chris Douglas again on the draw play. Takes it off the, the left side for a gain of about eight yards on the first down. Then we decide to throw the ball. And we have some problems with our protection, and uh, they get a sack. We have to wind up punting it to them here. And you get a chance to see uh, McCall scrambling around. Uh, we get some good pressure on him uh, initially by uh, Sean Johnson, and he winds up having to, to throw the ball away. Uh, here's Jordan on the uh, little option play. Doesn't get much, much out of that. Then here's a, a nice throw from D to Mike Hart right over the middle. Uh, the officials gave us a nice spot. We run a little... Uh, uh, kind of a naked pass. We know there's nobody out in front of him. Makes a nice throw to Nick Brzezinski, who gains about 22 yards for it. Then you get a chance to see D scrambles back there and does a nice job keeping it off the, the right side, scrambling forward, getting low, and uh, getting some, some good yardage. And we wind up kicking a field goal. Brent Garber kicks a 42-yard field goal to make the score uh, three to nothing. And here's uh, McCall going back, getting pressure by Johnson. And then uh, Troy Austin making making a nice play. And you're going to get to basically see the, the same thing again. Uh, Sean Johnson again will put pressure on the uh, on the running back, and, and Troy Austin comes in and makes a nice play. Well, Roy, uh, Troy has uh, been one of your senior defensive captains, and he really led by example in this half. And one thing you won't see him do, though, is get too carried away when he makes a big hit. That, that's just kind of how I've been brought up. Uh, through high school, uh, whether it be in basketball or football. You know, I went to a Catholic school, so they were, they were big on, you know, act respectable on the court, and I guess I picked up on that. So it's kind of when you make a big play, act like you've done it, act like you've been there before. And uh, I've kind of picked up on that. Here's a deep drop again. The rush comes. He steps up and goes down. Submarining the play was, again, Charles Porter, and Troy Austin came from the other side to knock him down. Snap to Dancer. He's going to keep it, run up the middle, and run right into Troy Austin. At defensive tackle, it's more a one on one battle. Uh, it's you and the guard most of the game. Every now and then, you'll get a double team. Whereas at nose tackle, you're pretty much getting doubled every play, whether it be a pass or run. You're going to have two people hitting you. It's, it's a whole lot more physical. And believe it or not, just moving that. For, that much closer to the ball picks up the speed of the game. Any, anytime you can make a play in the backfield or, or sack, something that will get the crowd pumped up, get your teammates pumped up, you know, that's always enjoyable. But there's also been other moments that aren't always on the field, like in the locker room, hanging out with the guys. Uh, I know in talking with Coach Jalan Malia, he says that's one of the main things he misses about football right now is, is hanging out in the locker room and fooling around. And I think I'm going to miss that. Not as much as playing, not as much as you know, going out there and competing, but a good bit. I'm going to miss a lot. I mean, there's no words to explain how happy I was when I was made captain. That I guess because everybody's worked hard and everybody's put in the extra hours. And I guess that just shows that you know, some of the other fellows noticed that I did that. Coach, the defense continued to play well on into uh, to intermission time. Well, here's Jordan coming up. JT Kate comes and forces the play back into Todd DeLamalier, who, who makes a nice play. Here's uh, McCall throwing complete to Hatala. And uh, Ronnie slipped a little bit, but came up and, and made a nice play. Here's Kendrell Knight making a good play on Jordan. Reaches out with, with basically one hand and pulls him down. It, it was impressive. Our guys, uh, Sonny Falcone, William Stevens, do a great job in the weight room. Here's a, uh, a throw downfield. Josh Kreider intercepts it. You know, we've, we've worked on him trying not to bring those plays out of the end zone so that the offense can have it at 20 instead of about the three. We've come a long, long way together. I have to praise you like I should. Thirst quencher of the Blue Devils. You either have it in you or you don't. Gatorade, is it in you? And by McDonald's, we'd love to see you smile. Well, Coach, uh, you came out uh, to start the second half uh, kind of in an unusual situation. You had the lead for the first time this year at the half. And uh, what did you, what'd you talk about in the halftime locker room and, and the adjustments you made for the second half? Well, you know, we had tried to prepare our team that you know, if we came out and played well enough, that, that we could be in position to have the lead. 
And then that puts us in a, in a little different uh, framework, not trying to come from behind, being able to maintain what, what we had started. I really thought we should have been ahead about 14 to nothing. Mm -hmm. our, our defense had played exceptionally well in holding Jordan to, to 12 yards rushing. So we talked about, we, we knew that they would get the ball at the beginning of the second half. And so we wanted to come out and try to, to get them off the field and get the offense out there. But, you know, a guy like Lamont Jordan is an outstanding player. You keep giving it to him, keep giving it to him, and you, you hope he can break a big play. And that, that's what he was, he was able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had really didn't make a whole lot of adjustments uh, in, for the second half. Uh, the plays we thought we were running offensively, the, the defenses we were playing were working pretty good. Uh, we did a few things different, but th there wasn't a whole lot of adjustments to be made. There was some more execution that, that needed mm -hmm. to be made. And the second half really turned on some big plays, and, yes. and that's what a lot of games do. You know, uh, he hit the, the big run. We had the uh, an interception in the end zone again, and then we had the rough and the kicker penalty, and then we had the the missed fourth down on the uh, on the sneak play. And uh, you know, those were certainly critical plays for us. But uh, we were able to run the uh, throwback pass to the quarterback right. and show everybody how it was supposed to be executed. <laughs> Last year we ran it at Virginia and it didn't quite work out. Uh, the way we wanted it to, although it resulted in a touchdown, so everybody gets a chance to see how it's supposed to work this, this time. Coach, it didn't take Maryland long to go right to work and get the lead. Here's that man, Lamont Jordan. No, you can see us reaching out, trying to make tackles, not getting our, our body there, and uh, they keep handing it to him. 77-yard touchdown run. Uh, you know, that, that gets them up 7-3. Seven, seven, Here's uh, McCall getting pressured by Todd DeLamalier. Nice interception by Fred Harris. Nice 20 yard return. Nice. Uh, I tell you what, he, he ran with it very well. Here's a little fake to uh, Dwayne Epperson. And we wind up throwing it. Dwayne makes a nice grab, makes uh, a guy miss him, and does a nice job uh, getting some positive yardage. Here's Jeremy Battier taking it around the left side for a seven yard gain and the first down. Then we uh, throw the ball down in the end zone, underthrow it a little bit, throw it a little bit late, and we get an interception in the end zone, so, which seems to happen to us quite a bit. McCall trying to run the option. Troy Austin, Sean Johnson, Ryan Fowler all mm -hmm. in on the, the uh, stop there. Uh, here's a sack by Sean Johnson. He was very active for us in the game. Then uh, we forced him to punt third, uh, fourth and about 20, and we run, run into the kicker, a, a critical play in the football game. Not only do we run into them, we get called for roughing it, which is an, an automatic first down. Right. And uh, they wind up getting a, a field goal. Here you see them making the field goal to make the score 10-3. to three. Here is uh, their new quarterback, Sean Hill, uh, in the game. Uh, interception there by uh, Ronnie Hamilton. And uh, you'll see D. Bryant throw complete. Ben Earl Jack circles back, makes a, a very nice game. We uh, are into the fourth quarter now, and another critical play to uh, Ben Earl Jack. I think that might have been the fourth down play. Here's a little uh, throwback screen to the tight end. Mike Hart does a, a very nice job running with it. Great block by Mike Alberto. Great job of uh, Mike of falling forward, uh, come up just short. Now, D tries to throw the ball with somebody hanging all over him. Uh, and wind up, winds up throwing an interception. But we hold them and, and force them to punt, get the ball right back, make a nice throw to, uh, to Chris Douglas. Uh, D did a great job of throwing the ball underneath after the early part of the game. And then everybody gets a chance to see how the throw back to quarterback is supposed to work. <laughs> and Ben Earl Jack makes a nice throw to D. We missed the extra point, so now the score is 10-9 in, uh, in Maryland's favor. Here is uh, Hill. Uh, throwing down to Hatala, splits our, our two defensive backs, and uh, that, that was a, a very a big game for him. Then you'll see Jordan coming through there. Now a whole lot of missed tackles, just not a lot enough people at the uh, the point of attack, and they wind up kicking the field goal and make it 13 tonight. Then we wind up, uh, D, it, it should have stepped up in the pocket there, would, would have helped us uh, a lot more. Here's a, a nice throw to the Mike Hart. A uh, nice game by him after the catching it. And we come up on the fourth down, and, and you know, I'm not quite sure <laughs> why we executed that play the, the way we did. But uh, then Jordan comes back, pops through there, and, and winds up running a 28-yard touchdown. 
hotel facilities and accommodations provided by the Durham Hilton, the official host hotel of the Duke Coaches Shows. It's time now for our Mercedes-Benz Play of the Week. All right, from the 20-yard line now, Ertel Jack goes to the far side, Hartopolis near side. Here the linebackers jump up. Here's the toss going to the uh, running back. The pitch off to Ertel Jack. Throw it back to Defy. Wide open. Touchdown! Little razzle-dazzle, if you will. And the Blue Devils, they've worked on that play and worked on it and worked on it. I wonder if we're going to see it in a game. We saw it. The pitch back going to the tailback, starting to his left, flipped it off to Ben Erdeljack, and Erdeljack pulls up and throws it to a wide-open quarterback, D. Bryant, who waltzes in for the TD. It's a play that we run every week in practice, and, uh, you know, it worked out just how it does in practice. Um, the way you set it up is probably by running the ball well in the game. Um, you know, you have to have a back that the defense is, is going to follow, and and I think that we ran the ball uh, pretty well today. And, and by running the sweep, the defense just flowed with, with the ball, and D was wide open on the throwback. Well, that certainly was an exciting play for the touchdown. There were several other exciting defensive plays, three interceptions to be more specific, one of those by Oxford native Ronnie Hamilton. One set back, Hill short drop, lobs it over the top. Hamilton's going to pick it off at the 40-yard line, nailed on the 38. So the interception, Ronnie Hamilton gets his second in as many games. That was similar to the same uh, interception that Ronnie Hamilton had last week against Georgia Tech. Down the right sideline, turning, looking for the ball and having better position and making a nice catch. Yeah, it's the same route. Um, Fade, I think teams, you know, see us in press now. They just challenge us, uh, trying to see if we can run with them. And I've been doing a good job uh, jamming them at the line and just running with them. And the ball's right there and just picked it off. gradually then all of a sudden they stop being young now dad's climbed back up the hill with the paper now mom's settling in with the mail now i wonder are they really okay would they tell me if they weren't and now the phone is ringing and mom is pulling herself up to say hello like it's the nicest part of the day Rolex 24 at Daytona, America's toughest sports car race. At the Daytona International Speedway, drivers like five-time champion Hurley Haywood race 24 hours through the heat of day and dark of night. Hurley and his Rolex are up to the rugged demands of this legendary race. Rolex, the choice of champions. come out just like it's any other game um, we're gonna work hard we're gonna get better um, I think the improvements that we've made offensively are there um, we're getting better week to week um, the receivers are getting better working with D and and whoever is in a quarterback so you know that those are positives that you need to draw from the game and we're just gonna go out this week and work hard and, and go after Wake. look at the uh, film and try to take the positives from this game and no way for us. It's going to be a tough game. Two teams scrapping for their first victory. And I think we had some success down there last uh, two years ago and got a win. So we're going to try to go out there. Uh, you know it's going to be another game going into the fourth quarter. And this, uh, this game, hopefully, we can win, go over the top in the fourth quarter. Well, it's that back to the drawing board attitude that Ronnie talked about of getting ready to go right back and get ready for a Wake Forest team coach that's like you looking for their first win. A noon start in Winston-Salem. They've had the week off. Advantage? Disadvantage? 
Oh, it, can, it can work either way. <laughs> uh, they get a little bit of time to prepare uh, for us, uh, a little bit more than, than we do for them, but they get out of their routine a little bit. So, you know, I, I don't know if week, weeks off mean, mean a whole lot. Maybe it gives you a chance to get a few guys uh, healthy that, mm -hmm. that haven't been. But, uh, you know, I, we'll be able to stay in, in our routine. Uh, we'll go back to work today. Our, our guys will go practice here in, in a little while. And uh, I think we'll be able to, to bounce back. It's two teams that haven't won a football game. So it's two teams that desperately would, would like to win one. Uh, both teams are struggling a little bit. So it should be a, a game where you're going to get to see a, a battle of wills. Mm -hmm. uh, who's willing to, to prepare the most, who's willing to, to play the hardest, who's willing to, to do the things that are necessary to give you a chance uh, to win the football game. And I think our team will uh, certainly do all those things. There have been a lot of areas where you've had steady improvement from game to game to game, and now you need to take that step and win one. Oh, we certainly do. Uh, everybody will feel a lot better. Our, uh, our whole mental outlook on life will, will be a little bit better. And I told the team after the game, when you, uh, when you win, you celebrate and you have to put it behind you. And when you lose, you, you hurt very badly, uh, especially uh, last night. Mm -hmm. But at least we get a chance to come out and, and start being willing to, to prepare this week. In life, a lot of bad things are going to happen to you, and you're going to bounce back. You're not going to give up. And I don't think our team's going to give up. I think our team is willing to bounce back and, and try to find a way to, to come out and get a win. All right, noon at Winston-Salem's Grove Stadium. Be back here again next week when we review it on the Duke Football Show with Coach Carl Franks. You can't just wait an hour before the game time and say, okay, I'm ready to play. Uh, it starts on Monday when you go in there and you watch film and, and look at who you're going to be going against this week and trying to figure out how you want to approach that player. Uh, it's something you think about all week. And then on Saturday, it's just, it just reaches its summit, its peak. Uh, that's when you run out there, ready to go out there and, and try to you know, make some plays. Here's the rollout by uh, Bryant. Fakes, the lineman jumped, he throws it complete underneath to the 50-yard line and into Maryland territory. Nick Brzezinski, the big freshman tight end. Inside handoff going to Lamont Jordan. Turns the corner, Ooh. caught by the jersey by the freshman linebacker, Ryan Fowler. Dropping, looking right, throwing back to the left, throwing up the left sideline, tipped away by Ronnie Hamilton. From the eye now with Kalapinski at fullback. Here's the drop back. The rush comes on McCall. He eludes it. Throws downfield. Intercepted at the 30-yard line. Back to the 40-45. Fred Harris to the 50 and goes to the ground. The snap this time goes straight to McCall. Looks to swing it out. Sean Johnson's going to swing him down. Back of midfield.